well now i think wukong makes a lot of sense despite the nerf still really strong uh and we'll see what they opt to take here you know if they were going like they've kind of done so far has kind of been the theme of the the series they would just pick a felios here but i'd kind of like to see them hold that if you do have a mid lane response to silas although in fairness one thing to mention is we have seen silas flexed up the top lane if anyone didn't catch the series earlier today we saw it flexed up specifically into nar i'm not sure that's necessarily going to happen here but flandre has obviously shown he can play ap tops yeah well the felios does end up keeping the trend so puts a little bit of pressure on you to kind of say look you need to be able to pick your ad carry at m excuse me at minimum here so Let's see what EDG want to go for. I wouldn't even mind to see again the handshake. Just get the Jinx in there. Just give it back to Viper. Maybe give him something safe in that bot side. The Braum did exceptional for Mako in game one. And right now you're kind of in a situation. Maybe you don't pick the Braum straight away. But if you see the support from top esports, you've got plenty of good options here to support Viper. Yeah, so I, I think ultimately if they they probably pick a jungle here would be the most standard. Uh, they could go for a top lane if there's something stand out that they think they can secure. But, you know, who knows? Nara is definitely something that people tend to prioritize here. Yeah, that would put pressure on top esports to respond when? to it. Um, we'll see what they end up doing. But uh, I feel like jungler will just be standard if you want to answer with like a Viego match into the Wukong. Um, obviously, with the Poppy available, that seems unavailable. That seems like the most likely. And then top esports. So you have multiple options. If you think your mid lane picks is going to get banned away, which if it's Talia, then certainly it would be, then picking it now makes the most sense. You shut down the dashes of the, the Silas and make it a little bit more difficult for him to navigate. And also, Talia's ult, as much as it can be useful, isn't like an immediate combat powerful one. You know, it's not like you're giving away something as, as like the Gnarl is super powerful. So mm. that could make sense as a mid lane response. Uh, and then you get priority on uh, your support pick after the bans. And you also get top lane counter pick for bans. I think top esports, you know, if you're going to pick Nautilus on four, banning away like uh, Tom, Kench, and Braum would make sense. But to be honest, I think if you do that, then EDG just ban, ban Nautilus. Yeah, I think that's the way you kind of look at it right now. So top esports got to figure out where they want to try and take these bans. I will say, fun little thing just in my head, the current three top laners that I think about in my head are Nar, Gangplank, Gwen, all beginning with the letter G. Interesting one there to kind of come about. But, but we're going to see the Rakan banned away by top esports as they are starting to ban away some of those supports. And like you said, I feel like if you just ban the Nautilus here by the side of EDG, you're giving yourself just more options and you can even decide to ban the Gwen afterwards or ban the Gwen now. Now, I like that they ban the Gwen first, because then if, for example, if top esports ban like Braum or Tom here, then you can, you can ban away the Nautilus. Like, you make top esports commit the ban, uh, and then you counteract the pick that they clearly want to get. Actually banning Lulu. Wow. Which I find really, I mean, it's hard to scope out what they're going to do from this position. But like, I feel like EEG, though, if top esports pick Nautilus, then you can just go Braum. But maybe they just ban it because, you know, it is a different composition to what they had before. You got to bear in mind that like the composition they had in game one, the full plan was to kite backwards with the Poppy with the Talia. That's not quite the case anymore. So maybe we see them thinking that the Nautilus is an issue. But I'd expect, particularly for Mark, that would be the fourth pick. But they actually banned the Tom Kench, interestingly enough. So it does reduce one of those tools. There is still that Braum available. And then top esports go for the Braum, which explains the uh, bans of the Rakan Lulu. And we're going to see what EDG will do in response if they want to go for an enchanter to take advantage of this lane. Yeah, they could obviously abuse it. The Braum is very, very powerful at stopping any of those hard engages, but does, as you say, struggle against things like Enchanters. But it's still Mako, so we might still get the Nautilus coming out here because he is big into his hard engages, something that he loves to play, has played them historically all his entire career, and that is locked and loaded. Now you got to blind your top laner. Technically speaking, we are still waiting to see where that Silas goes. Like you said, we did see it in top lane earlier today for RA versus BLG, but without knowing what you're taking into it, you got to feel like it's going to be silas mid and maybe even just something safe like a nar top yeah i think the nar pick's fantastic here because obviously it's a strong top lane a strong blind but you also deny uh actually no because it's going to be on the same side as silas so you know denying it's actually one of the downsides but it's still such a strong pick here uh in terms of blind and now if the response from top esports might end up being that aurelia coming out and obviously with a braum on side if you land the passive on someone aurelia great is stacking it alongside the wukong we'll see if they offer this this is a volatile matchup Obviously, Aurelia can be favored. You can drop on them, but you could also just play it a bit safer and go for the Gangplank. Yep, go for the Gangplank there. I will say it does give uh, Scout an option for a very powerful ultimate. If you don't know, the Cannon Barrage scales off of AP, so it is a pretty powerful punch once you get into the later stages of the game if he does steal that ultimate. But like you said, just safer for the laning phase, can still become a monster, and didn't have the greatest of games for Flandre last time. Wayward about to show Flandre how it's done. 
yeah for sure and I, th I think this match was a pretty comfortable one for the gp should just build to trade use his parlay stacks use grass ultimately i feel like the way the draft has kind of panned out is a bit of an interesting one you know i was thinking that I would expect top esports to go for more the aggressive picks but clearly they want to play for that front to back they know they have engage uh, from that wukong and then edg going for the jinx nautilus into the felios brawn feels like a difficult lane to really find any momentum in so you know i feel ultimately top esports i'd probably lean towards their draft i think they're quite happy happy with what they got i don't think it's as egregious as like game two draft by any means but you know the main thing is what can scout do on the silas this pick that's been banned away so heavily prioritized so heavily i will say he doesn't exactly have a fantastic choice of ultimates i don't think anyone's like you know there's no nar on the other team there's no alistair nothing's like really stand out yeah, nothing absolutely stand out at the moment. But again, it's not about just how are you able to use his ultimate. Yes, of course, the ultimate stolen can be incredibly impactful, but it is more just to do with the fact that Silas himself is ex incredible, sustain, really good brawler into the mid game, great item spikes as well. So should be able to make stuff work. And like you said, it's been highly prized throughout this series so far. Banned both in game one and two, finally let through and was first picked in game three. Talia will make 100% uh, appearance alongside the Aphelios. And we start to see now what both these teams can do. Remember, one apiece. And again, it's such a huge moment for both these sides. Absolutely is such a massive one. We talked earlier about the stakes. Top Esports wanted to get nine wins and keep pace with JDG and V5. The EDG, there's a big gap, right? Top Esports are on eight wins. The next place team is RNG on six, which EDG are tied in wins with. So you want to be closing the gap and catching up with those front runners keeping the hopes of a top four spot alive going into playoffs. You want to try and end out your week. Remember, we are at the end, coming up to the end. Tomorrow will be the final day of week seven, or week six, excuse me. If you missed it, of course, FBX versus OMG was postponed from today until tomorrow. So that will be happening before our matches tomorrow. So thankfully, it won't be too much of a disturbance to our actual regular schedule. Just to be able to move your Super Saturday to a Super Sunday. As we wait to see now and here. But again, we're going to be starting week seven. This is when we start to get to, the, again, the last three, four weeks of the split. And that's when the games start to become more and more impactful. Yes, all, match, all games count, but some more so than others, depending on how the matches have already gone. That's the thing is it's so different in the LPL compared to the regions because we have a single round robin. So, you know, you could be looking at your final schedule and be like, hey, this ain't too bad. Or you could be going, oh, Lord, what is that? A big example is Top Esports will face V5 on week 10. And that will be a challenging matchup for them to take. So, you know, they want to get as many points as possible to go into that if they want to try and challenge for the number one spot against them, which I had a real hard pressed regardless, but I uh, want to keep their hopes alive. Now, game sort of kicks off. You know, Tian has been fantastic at finding these angles to approach the early game, managing to make things happen. So we'll keep an eye on him and see what he can do. Currently just clearing down towards his bot side and we'll have junglers ending up on opposite sides of the map. Now, bot lane, as you'd expect, Jinx is going to be the one finding early prio, uh, but I feel like once this lane stabilizes for Mark and Jackie Love, it should be a lot easier for them to play. Yeah, feels like once you're able to stabilize, as you said, you should be able to make a lot more use out of this particular setup, but Piper just going to get the push in again. We see this a million times over. We can talk about it a million times. We're actually going to see Knight now. Ooh, if that lands, he's going to be absconded, abducted, and he probably loses his flash. So very good for him that he does not end up getting caught out by that, but a little bit of risky business. And actually being zoned away from the wave, annoyingly enough, uh, doesn't really achieve too much. Knight doing a good job of dodging away from both of the stuns there. Uh, and able just to defend himself but jj fishing for some opportunities and now pretty standard ward we see here coming from teams on blue side just to be wary of any, any angles now 10 obviously can w over the wall and dodge it uh but will likely just be spotted on the scuttle and using your w to get over the wall means you don't have it for the gang for the gap close wait to see now and again both these teams desperate to try and find a win. It's not just about, we talk about it a million times and we'll keep talking about it. It's not just about getting the win. Of course, it means the head to head. But the higher up in the standings you get, the less best of fives you have to play. And yes, we have seen some fantastic gauntlet runs. You think of WE and LNG back in 2021. Summer, who went from the first round all the way up into the finals, even the winner's finals, I should say, for WE. And of course, the gauntlet for them as well. Sometimes you just want to try and maybe set yourself up for a little bit of an easier time to get up towards those top two places guarantees you a double elimination. It means you're guaranteed at least one loss that you could maybe mess up with and come back twice as strong. So 
Both sides really want to make this one work. And honestly, I think that Mako doing right now, which I absolutely love, is that he's just basically securing the fact that Tien is not in his bot side jungle. He leaves the Jinx there, knowing there's no real kill threat with the Aphelios and Braum, and kind of says, look, I'm just going to do a little bit of quick, quickly scouting around to make sure we're not getting wrapped around. Yeah, I think as well as the, the, the wave state, the fact they got the early shove, the bounce back comes in, and you know your AD carries won't be denied at all. Doesn't really miss out too much CS and should just be able to catch the big wave once you're back there. Yeah, I see a lot of trading going in the mid lane. Scout opted for the first strike here, so a lot of bursts added to the combo, but not too much opportunity to proc it in lane. I do feel like this rune is more of a mid game one, though. That's the point where you don't have damage to really get value out of it. Uh, and then obviously, late game, you know, the extra burst is nice, but the gold probably less valuable. Yeah, probably a little less valuable in that regard. Uh... I do, rem I do I do remember and sort of miss the uh, the old days of Scuttle being uh, absolutely like if you did not get a one Scuttle in the game, if someone two Scuttle you, the jungler was so far behind oh, it was dude. absolutely absurd. I feel like, no, like they nerfed it and obviously junglers will still die for a Scuttle, but at least it's just less impactful now. Now, Toppy's supposed to start this Dragon Lady and they've been spotted out. This is really risky. We've seen so many of these backfire, these five minute dragons because the jungler gets chunked. And as soon as top esports are called out on it, yep, just disengage. Although they might look for something here. Tien, you're still tanking that. 4v4. This is going to be Tien still tanky. It is still an Infernal Drake, so he's quite slow to put the damage down. We'll reset. And top esports, they haven't really got a push in mid, so they're actually losing out on this one. But it'll be re-aggroed, and they go back in on top of this. It's a push and pull. No, that neither team really wants to fully commit to this. Eventually, top esports say, look, we got to back away. We can't actually take this. But it's been oh gifted God. over to JJ. Now you're level 6, though, for scout. And you can't contest a top esports. They just give over a free drink. Yeah, very, very messy from top esports. Not only do they spend so much time in it, but like they don't drop it. It's, it's so clear that you should just drop it and move on. And yet they stay. They keep staying. They keep trying to make it work. And it just costs more and more HP and costs more and more time. Oh, nice little dash there from Scout to buff for the knockback. Yeah, very nicely done there. Does steal away the Weaver's Wall. So has the option to make something work. Just more of a point to say tonight, I have something. So like this, if I go off into Fog of War, you need to be very respectful because Wayward might be in a lot of trouble. And Silas, Scout is still going up. He's got the Weaver's Wall. He could cut off any retreat. Yeah, definitely could here. Oh, might be like tricky that. though. Wayward does have the oranges, does have the ult to clear the wave. So maybe don't want to go for a dive here. But you can see Wayward actually having a pretty rough time in the lane matchup here now. Looks like he might cough. Oh, I might. love this. Oh, I love this. They're going to try and cut him off. Immediately, Knight has to flash away. Tien just a little bit too late to the party to try and help out his mid laner. And this is EDG again, looking calm and controlled. A lot more comfortable on the picks this time around compared to game two. Yeah, I will say, though, it's a flash to flash. So not too much of an issue in terms of all, all, overall summoners, especially as Knight has that spell book. So he is going to be able to cycle some different ones into that slot later in the game. Uh, but... It does mean there's an opportunity to repunish, right? If they find another avenue to approach, if they find another angle to try and gank Knight, he is now summoned unless it will be trickier for him to evade that without the flash. Yeah, flash for flash it was for JJ as well. So you do lose it off the jungler. But again, far more impactful to lose it off of something like a Talia than it is off of a uh, now level 6 uh, Viego. Tien going to see that he's sitting on top of a ward while he's taking his rep. So knows that he's in full vision of the enemy team and that could open up some avenues so the rest of the top esports you'll notice now will start to get a little bit more obvious with their movements kind of say look we know our jungler's top we know you know our jungler's top so we're gonna have to play safe bot or maybe play safe mid and the game has been pretty slow so far other than that scuffle around the dragon but with herald spawning soon you can see that jackie love and mike uh jackie love and mark sorry have uh managed to get the push in bot lane and have started to walk concerns about like if the meta shifts away from like Shahu being on things like Lissandra, being on these like picks with agency. If you pick, if you go more towards control mages, like the Corky isn't too certain, it could be problematic. And uh, we looks like we are back into game. So audio issues hopefully fixed. And we were talking about before we went away, sorry for that break, uh, the Herald being set up for top esports, right? Top esports had priority in the lane, instantly move over, but EDG are responding and should be here in time. Do have a cannon barrage though, and Meganar has just been wasted by Flandre. So I think that EDG, as much as they would like to contest this, it might not be for the Rift Herald, it might be for the fight afterwards. Here we go. We're going to see them all trying to corral themselves in. Maybe they try to go back up the back of the pit. There's the Moonlight Vigil and the cannon barrage. They drop down the traps, and it does latch onto three people, but you can't really go forward onto that. You did have to use quite a few ultimates there on the side of top esports, but they're not quite able to get anything else out of it. Top esports get the Rift Herald, and they will be able to reset themselves back onto the map.
And that is best case scenario is when the enemy team comes and contests you on Herald. Don't get the Herald, don't get any kills. But they didn't do anything else with the time. So if you actually look towards bot lane, I believe the wave bounce, that's a pretty big stacking wave that uh, Jackie Love's going to be able to collect in uh, and obviously put himself in a really nice position. So he'll get that wave. And normally, you know, we've seen those plays where one team goes Herald, the other team takes like three plates, particularly with AD carries like Jinx or Aphelios. And it ends up being a net negative trade as a result. Yeah, absolutely. This time around, though, as you said, Viper and Mako did roam themselves up, so they weren't really in a position to try and capitalize fully as the side of EDG, and just going to try and continue to put down the pressure in this top side. The Gnar, with those steel-plated toe caps, going to be able to keep himself nice and safe, keep putting the pressure down onto Wayward, and those plates are starting to tick away, so he's almost got to pick up two plates on his own volition. Already got about a 20 CS lead as well, so... This is starting to become significant in that top side. I think Wayward's starting to feel the punishment that uh, Flandre felt in game two. Yeah, not have the best time. And, you know, uh, this is why Nar's been such a high prior pick and people have been blinding it so free. Oh, man, I'm I'm so tired of Jinx is doing that. I, I feel like I should <laughs> break it. So Jinx will hit you when you're full HP. It does zero damage because it's like... Oh, and they're still going. He just wants yeah. to reset. Let a man leave. I don't think he's allowed to reset because they're going to look for the full fight. Now, Jackie Love in a lot of trouble here. He's got some good guns, though. Green and white. They're going to have the Glacial Fisher forcing a flash out of Mako. <laughs> he wants to leave, but EDG did not let him. And now they're going to have to full reset here. I don't know if Aphelios is going to be able to get this one here because with the wave state right now, EDG will gain so much. He's going to have to get back on behind his tower. Yeah, but he gets the flash from Mako. That was kind of one of those situations where you're like, oh, you don't want me to leave, eh? And then he just turns. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. You have to respect... Raw Mephelios was one of the old school combos back in the era of 200 years where it was such a strong pairing because he can so quickly stack up the passive. Braum can create space for him and he can turn it around. And Mako, already picking up the Merc Treads, probably has him flinching in the runes as well, has to be so cautious. You know, you step far, uh, step too far forwards, you are very squishy as the Nautilus. Like compared to things like Leona, compared to Braum, you will just get bursted out. I will say, though, I think that Mako in his own head is like, I got the heal out of uh, Jackie Love. He hasn't been able to reset before this dragon has started. So he's actually sitting on his still starting item. He hasn't been able to get back and kind of reset this one. And we're back at the dragon pit. But again, EDG are in position. They will have a Weaver's Wall here to stop JJ from really getting on top of this one here. They might look to try and get Heartbreaker over the wall. There's the ultimate coming up from the Jinx. It completely whiffs as he wanted to try and catch that one out. But EDG, despite all their efforts, I know what they were trying to do for that dragon. They just didn't really kind of stick anything from it. Yeah, the saving grace is they got that first dragon, so it's nice that that's been able to come out and obviously deny top people from having two here. But I just love the use of the Weaver's Wall by Talia's this series. Just completely cutting off the team and making it incredibly hard to contest the objective. Uh, really giving value to that pick. Now, something to note is that Mark is the one with the Rift held in inventory. So they're kind of locked into using it wherever he is. You can see he actually reset and he's gone mid. So it looks like they're going to throw it down mid and grab a couple of plates there. While that was all happening, though, they were actually end up seeing the top lane being pushed in here by Flandre. So he should be getting himself his third plate of the game. This is going to be three plates, you would imagine, over tonight. Nope, just going to be the two. As uh, Scout finally gets himself back into the lane. So they use it immediately because, like you said, it was on top of the Brahms. So not really the best of places to be able to kind of capitalize on a bad rotation as such as Viper. Ooh, if that, if that Q lands, he's in a lot of trouble because he had nobody around him for support. Yeah, might end up being a summoner off the back of that. But manages to dodge away. Uh, and it's good move for Mark. Like, that's one of the, the main concerns. The reason you always want Harold and your jungler is because they can't have the freedom to be anywhere on the map. And obviously, Mark made his way mid, dropped it, headed back bot where he needs to be to support Jackie Love and find a good window, good opportunity to do it. The, the one downside as well is that the gold ends up getting split between him and Knight instead of Tien and Knight. But, you know, you'll take it. You've got the Herald. That's all the, the relevant thing. But bot top has been... A major sword point so far. And eventually it'll get to the point where Wayward can just one-shot the waves and it's less of a concern. But for now, he's just feeling a lot of pain. Plates being picked up consistently by Fondre. Yeah, Triforce versus Triforce. We also see the TP being used here by Wayward to get himself back up onto the map to try and maybe create some space. We do actually have Crown of the Shattered Queen here for Knight, who's not going with the Ludens or with the Everfrost, as the Everfrost has been picked up by Scout, so... Didn't actually get the touch on it, but first strike for Scout. He's looking to try and just, you know, kind of burst out and get that extra damage and gold onto himself. Should he be able to find an opportunity? Yeah, I quite like this one here. I, I always like the idea of kind of, you know, rewarding the aggressive play. Yes, you would argue it's not the easiest to proc, but if he does land the Skon Abduct and gets right on top of it, he gets a hell of a lot of value off of it and has quick skirmishes. So we'll see the junglers. No way do they miss each other. They didn't actually see each other. They both missed out where they were as Wayward. Just jump away from Flandre. 
Sorry, Flandre jumps into him, and they're going to try and dive him underneath this turret. It should be enough for them to be able to take him out, but here we go. He hasn't popped down the cannon barrage just yet. There's the flash coming in after the orange. A flash in, though, to try and burn him down. The heartbreaker is good, and there's finally first blood. 14 minutes, Ox, and we finally get our first kill of the game. Yeah, and Wayward does everything he can, but unfortunately, with EG having both flashes with the Mega Nar, not much more they can do, but here is going to be the counterpoint. Jackie Love with red white, this tower is gone. Yeah, once you have the white gun, you are just going to be able to absolutely burn through it, as you can see just there. They will trade it back, so it is still a one-for-one -one trade. You get a little bit more local gold for the side of Top Esports as they were the ones to take the first tower, but... This is great for the side of EDG. Flandre doing exceptionally well, and it does feel like it's kind of back to that style for the side of EDG, where if Flandre is able to get himself ahead, they will look consistently good. Yeah, and honestly, I feel like Flandre has been one of the big underperformers of spring for this lineup, so he has been having a good series. The Vlad game completely unchecked. This game here, playing the non, really challenging Wayward. In fairness, game two was a rough matchup, and he did get ganked. But now, JJ is going to be able to pick up the second Herald, Gonna look to see where they opt to move, use it. It's a minute 20 till Dragon, so I expect they might throw it down mid to try and get pressure over there. I expect it's being a Mountain Soul. This third Dragon coming up will likely see these teams going head to head over that one. And really it's gonna come down to the fact that Flandre super strong in that top lane matchup, but Jackie Love has the edge in terms of AD carries. There's a whole BF sword over Viper that could really pay dividends when we get to that fight. Yeah, we're starting to see stopwatches being picked up as well. You can see there one in the inventory of Knight as we scout. Just clearing out the jungle on the top side, kind of saying, look, I need to be as strong as I possibly can in 50 seconds time. Probably looking for a stopwatch of his own. As CN's looking for something here. Not quite able to find a decoy on a fairly decently low cooldown at this point in the game. Should be back up at about 10 seconds or so. So still plenty of time and opportunity, but it looks like the top lane's going to be answered here by Scout because he's the one with TP. So he's going to be able to steal away the cannon barrage and basically be a better version of Wayward because Wayward doesn't have TP himself. Yeah, so we was going to have to start making his way down. Obviously, the AP ratio on the kind of barrage pretty nice, too. Tiena Mark went for some aggressive vision. You can see, it is, it's still concerning. Like, if you step up and get caught by a Braum Q, it's so easy for top esports to follow up. And the advantage Wukong has, the big reason he's so strong is uh, that safety net. The fact you can just dash away, drop the clone, very hard to pin you down. Now, uh, Scout has done his homework. He's got the wave pushing in top. So, something that top esports are going to either miss out on if they don't answer. But now the TP's coming in, and it's top esports who have control over the area. I think they might just get this before there's even a response. Yeah, there's not really a response here, but they're going to drop the Rift Herald in mid. So Scout TP's in with the Cannon Barrage in tow. He has got a stopwatch available as well. Dragon does go over to the side of top eSports. As you can see now, the mid lane turret trying to be put in. Mako in a lot of trouble. He's forced to flash. There's the Glacial Fisher. It does land on the JJ. But it doesn't really get anything else out of it. Now, TN, there's going to be the Cannon Barrage coming out to try and slow their retreat, but it's very hard to get anything else. A lot of ultimates used here by top eSports defensively. As they just get themselves away, they get the dragons, so they're already onto two, but you can see the pressure that EDG are able to put on top of them. Yeah, that was actually Scout's cannon barrage that came down. We would held his, so... Ah, it's, yes. Yeah, the only ends up being Jackie Loves traded out defensively, but in the end, Top Esports get the dragon. They get what they want. They even defend the mid-tier one. Yes, it's chunked out, but the Herald was going to do that regardless, so I think they're happy with that passage of play, how it turned out. You gotta be very happy you didn't lose anything, you gained something. It is about a thousand gold lead now for EDG as they start to come up crest up into the mid stage. As we can see now, Scout gonna find Wayward and TN up in this top side, so doesn't want anything else to do with it once he takes the ward, he backs himself away. But this is where the game this is feeling eerily similar to game one, where the game started to just not really do anything. It feels like the side of top esports are just very it's very difficult for them to make proactive plays outside of around those objectives. And that was kind of their big problem coming into game one. It just really didn't feel like they had any options to kind of like you know, not just 5v5 fight and EDG, which is how team fought them. But I will say that the the composition matchup in game one was a lot more difficult. Uh, they, they really had struggles if they didn't find momentum. You know, there's the Talia Poppy denying the dash in. It was into Jinx Braum that were really good at playing defensively in that manner. Uh, I feel like in this situation, you know, top esports have a lot of ability to kite back against things like the Gnar, like the Viego, like the Silas. And really, it's EDG who want to be able to find backline access slam someone into a wall with a gnar and then get viper getting reset so i think you know i'm, I'm not as concerned with the game going slow because game one that really did favor edg and as much as edg love to lean in the team fights top esports are no slouches no absolutely not zeal finished up here for viper as well does mean that he's still relatively in tow in terms of with jackie love jackie love however is still waiting to go back and probably spend some of that gold right now uh, as they're both sitting on their berserker greaves and of course their first 
mythic item or their own mythic item but now jj moving up towards this top side we will see wayward in a lot of trouble here the everfrost has been hit that means the orange has to be used straight away and now jj he's gonna find himself right on top of the pirate they're gonna put down the heartbreaker they don't quite get the jinx ult, but it does not matter really nice play there from the mid jungle of edg yeah really solid play and they're just playing the game to punish wayward Make this top laner feel pain. And top esports, there's not really much they can do in response. They have that bot wave pushed in. They're trying to pressure this mid lane tier one. But you're up against the Jinx. The wave clear is there. I don't think they're able to find much here. Yeah, we'll see what they're able to kind of work from here as Jackie Love's just trying to build those chakrams. Again, running out of red and white. So he's not going to have that available to him for the next little while. Should be get it back in about two minutes time once the uh, dragon spawns, but we are looking at about a 2,000 gold lead now for EDG, and you can see what Aranjuan's Omen finished up here for Flandre. Flandre is huge. Flandre is becoming a big, big menace, because yes, he has absolutely no magic resistance, but he doesn't really care about the Talia, because the Talia shouldn't be focusing him anyway. Yeah, I mean, that is one thing to be said. Like, if the Talia does connect a combo onto you, it can really chunk out, but, you know, having the Randoins, really powerful, getting that slow, and if you get in close range now, I even flies over just to defend the mid lane tier one. They are so set on making sure this doesn't fall and try to keep it healthy for as but long as they, they can. The, yeah, but they lose the bot tier one then, surely, because that's going to basically free up the Flandre Nar. But he's going to back away as the rest of top esports. They're kind of being pulled around the map a little well, bit right now. EDG are just kind of pulling them from top to bot. Yeah, definitely. But to be honest, like even if they lose the bot lane tier one, it's nowhere near as much of a concern as mid tier one. Mid tier one is such a, a great focal point to have. When you're trying to set up for dragons you know if you have it up and available very hard for the enemy team to push in too deeply uh really limits like your ability to get deeper vision as well so both teams have really tried to hunker down and defend those now mark getting some vision around the area it's 45 seconds till that dragon it would be third for top esports so by all means they would love to be able to pick this one up and lean into that the thing is there is to just shy for 2000 gold lead for edg and, you know, I feel like one thing is that Jackie Love, like, isn't quite at the point where he's really, like, a super relevant threat yet. You even see the Viper's finished his second item before he's got his. Yeah, Rapid Fire Cannon has been finished up. You haven't quite got the Bloodthirster here for Jackie Love, so you are at a little bit of a item discrepancy here for top esports and already losing the Crown of the Shattered Queen. Not exactly ideal. Should be back in a couple of seconds, though, just before the Dragon does spawn. But it's EDG trying to just control the mid lane as well as the in, in the river as well around the Dragon Pit. Scout did steal the Cannon Barrage as Wayward does TP back in. They haven't used the TP from Scout just yet. Never mind, it's coming in. It's on a big flank on the bottom half of your map. So Scout is there. And JJ already down below half. But here we go. They're going to try and go for the game. But Jackie will force the flash away immediately. There's a great Cannon Barrage. And he lands the Abscond of Duck. Yes, they've lost the Aphelios as well. And that's going to be a trade back of two for one in favor of top. But look at those health bars with scout and viper so healthy i don't know if you can continue to fight this yeah this mix is so scary it looks like reset's gonna come in bear in mind knight has tp to come back but he's not the one of the lowest health top esports just need to try and buy time for the brawn to rejoin the, da Ooh, the not dragon's not gonna do tons of damage but tian still has to spike still has flash this is very hard for edg they want to buy time for their jungle to come back yeah, they're trying to go for it, but they're going to try and burst it out here now. Maybe try and bait Tien in, who has to get backed away. He's not quite in the position to go for it. The smite isn't there. He couldn't get it because of the traps, and now the resets can come in. Viper can be very aggressive here as the Gnar into the wall does catch out the gangplank as Wayward goes down. EDG get themselves a second dragon, and not only that, they get themselves three kills. EDG got what they wanted. The dragon denied. The stacking stymied from top esports. And ultimately, they just shut down. Jackie Love didn't quite have the Bloodthirster available. Managed to uh, just drop him down. I think Scout found the initial play onto him. And then it was uh, JJ who followed up. So initially, it's just a very scattered fight from top esports. They're kind of getting corralled in here. And they start with some good momentum, some burst onto Mako. But Scout beelines instantly for Jackie Love here. Gets the uh, E onto him, which bursts him down, and then the reset from JJ. And yeah, JJ instantly dies afterwards, but you killed the major threat on top esports. And I feel like top esports, if you're going to allow yourself to get flanked like that, it's just not going to go well. No, it really, really is. And then you can see here, look, they drop down the traps, and that means the traps he's just just out of range to try and make that smite work you can see he's probably just spamming his d key so damn hard trying to get on top of it and that means flandre is able to kind of just be happy as larry on the back side of that fight that's going to open up the tier one as well in mid lane because they got the better resets and now edg are starting to take over this game a little bit again it's similar to game one in terms of how the game pace is going top esports trying to find some opportunities but edg is playing better around their composition 
Absolutely, and I am back as she in my th yeah. <laughs> you drink. Choked. I just I was like I'm gonna keep talking for a little bit and hope he's yep, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> had a deep drink. I'm feeling better. It's been a long, long day. I have six games and a lot day. of pauses, a lot of stalling. But now we was we was all gonna be used to try and get this mid tier one. But everyone's so scared to approach because of the Jinx rockets. Yeah, they will get it, but at what cost? Because now oh, look, we're going to see a flash. In. The double flank, they're pincering in. They're going to see now with Flandre there. Scout trying to get himself a Glacial Fisher. He steals it away, but he gets taken out. You've got the Cannon Barrage just stopping everyone from EDG from walking forward. This look is the power Flandre. of the Talia. Flandre finally gets into Mega, but he's not quite in a position to capitalize. There are low health bars on top esports, but they gain two. The power of the Braum there and the Ophelia are so quickly able to stun Scout out. And the main thing was they kited backwards in one direction. They picked an angle. It was the angle where Scout was. They moved into him. They took him down. And then the rest of VDG couldn't approach. So difficult to just follow up when there's things like that Braum, like that Talia, like the GP as well, creating disruption. I've got the replay, but you see, you know, put some in a compromising position because they overcommit for that mid tier one. Scout is on this angle, but it's spotted. And Jackie Love, Gale Force is over to him. They just go for heavy lockdown onto uh, the Silas, who doesn't have a stopwatch anymore. And because of that ult from the Braum, because of the Unraveled Earth, the rest of EDG can't follow up. So they just managed to take those kills, take the mid tier one, and walk out of it and keep this game close. Yeah, keep it close. Still about 2,000 gold in favor of EDG, but giving over a lot of gold there. You can see now. Chain Punk, what is it? Ken Punk Chain Swords for everybody on the side of Top Esports. They are, and actually on the side of EDG as well. We got a third one coming out here for Flandre. So you've got pretty much those items across the board here for all of the top side of the map. You've actually got a Rabadon's Death Cap here for Scout as he builds up towards what I imagine is going to be his Zonya's Hourglass as his third item. Yeah, and yeah it's going to be this, interesting this one, to see so the next fight. Salas has fantastic AP ratios. Like his Q, if you hit both parts, 135%. W is 90, E's 100. Like, this is a nice build for doing damage, but not having a Zonya's means without a stopwatch, he is quite vulnerable. And as you said, Kempunk Chainsword built by a lot of people. This item is just a stat stick now. Um, it gives, it's like 125% gold efficient. It gives 55 AD and 25 ability haste. Bear in mind, Death Stance, which is way more expensive. Death Stance is 700 gold more, gives the same AD. So a really nice cheap spike that all of these AD bruisers are just opting to abuse. Can, can we see where it kind of ends up going with in terms of the fights right now you are nearly at an infinity edge here for viper he's about probably 500 gold so probably only about three or four waves away we can see a stopwatch being picked up for jejez he starts to work towards that next potential fight which is where this game starts to get a little bit more tentative for both teams because don't forget we're past coming up past the 27 minute mark death timers are significant one catch out could mean 30 to 40 seconds without you being on the map so this is where the game starts to get a little bit more scary for these teams because you cannot just let them have it in 23 seconds seconds you just picked up sorel just grudge there for wayward but you don't really have vision here as a side of edg you can't really walk into this uh, dragon pit without knowing where top esports are and it's so important the top esports have control and are in the river because edg are the ones who want to try flanks want to try and approach if top esports have vision it makes it so much harder they can retreat and as edg run through where their wards are they can keep their eyes on all the threats flandre ready with the meganar but currently no one's really on a flank angle you can see scout walking around if you approach oh actually not he's changed his mind now oh the weaver's wall though is going to separate everybody out and they can burst out this dragon the cannon barrage to stop everyone from going for the fight afterwards and top esports could just walk away that was perfectly used with their ultimates to say you can't walk into us yeah so good there from night the weaver's wall and the unraveled earth it's like i made a wall and if you jump over it you're gonna get stunned so edg have to just walk away they try and lead suppression to that bot lane tier two but they can't commit too many members because of the baron on the other side of the map and you can see top esports will just move over and start to secure vision there once more no fight for this dragon obviously did for c for the last one but top esports if they can use that weaver's wall effectively can just sweep up these neutrals and now one dragon away from the mountain soul you can see just how much restraint that the side of EDG had to put into that as well because they could have overcommitted. They could have just said, no, we have to fight now, but they decided not to. They finally go back, pick up the Infinity Edge there for Viper. Would have loved it for that last fight to really force it, but he's now significantly further ahead than his counterpart. He's actually got himself up. That wouldn't kill, and despite the four assists, it's just keeping Jackie Love just a little bit behind the power curve. You've got the Zonyas now finished up here for Scout. On the other side of it, you're waiting for a Zonyas here for Knight, and now the Baron's being started. They're going to try and force a fight. Yeah, they're gonna try and make something happen. 
Megana is available. The ten is over the wall. It can easily get in the pit. Can I play some here? Down so low. Yeah, Wayward's not here. There's a 5v4 right now. They're going to try and jump on the Flandre, but look at him tank up. Solin right at the back of a TN gets the perfect steal, but now the fight can really begin. The concussive blows comes down onto Mark, and there's going to be the counter barrage right on top of Viper. You've lost three, and out of nowhere, ADG, you flip the barrel, and you're going back to McDonald's. Such a misplay from EDG, you have to say, but top esports Chen is clutch, and when it matters... Oh, no, he's going to find Viper 2! <coughs> or is he? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, he okay. is. They're going to be able to get it. Right. Fantastic yeah. play That's from Top Esports to punish. It That's might be. They might just push it and end. It's only Scout up and available, and it's Baron Minions. It might be over just as soon as that one play, one mistake from the side of EDG might have cost him everything. See, Cannon Barrage available, available for Scout. He's going to try and buy time. He's trying to buy time, but you got two Cannon Minions right now. He's going to try and kill off Tien now that Mako is back, but the Nexus has been exposed. He doesn't land the Abscond of Ducks. Top Esports find one moment to try and make this one work. They need to kill off Wayward. They need to try and stop the Infelios, but they cannot. Top Esports, two to one, and get themselves up to nine wins. And such a celebration coming out from Top Esports, a heavily fought series. And it felt like they were starting to establish the advantage. We saw them there playing the Talia so well, trying to cut off EDG when it came to the Dragons. And EDG just got desperate. They just felt like, look, yeah. we can't deal with this Felios late game. Let's try and start the Baron. But against a Wukong, someone who can so easily get into the pit. And Tian fantastically managing to secure the steal. I mean, to be honest, even without the steal, they probably would have taken that fight. But the icing on the cake and gave them the extra power to push in and end there and then. Yeah, honestly, what a what a way to end it as well for Top Esports. Again, we saw the power of this Talia. I, I can't really get over it because I really do think this pick right now is just so unbelievably broken in the right hands. Just being able to cut off everyone from any kind of engage. Like, you want a 5v5 team fight? No, you don't get one. You cannot get one. And that's the big power that you have with this pick. So for me, this is just going to end up being a must ban, must pick going forward because at the moment, any team that's worth their weight in salt is going to pick it. Yeah, and do you want to know something crazy? Is that Talia's actually buffed on 12-13. So, you know, oh, wasn't really seeing that much success. Otherwise, the damage has gone up there. So it's actually going to be pretty nutty. But yeah, yep. the, the control available, so strong, so powerful. Knight, obviously fantastic off it. We've seen Ricky have fantastic performances on it. Uh, really impactful pick. But I feel like one big aspect was, you know, when we're playing this front-to-back style, when we're playing the Braum, the Talia, the Aphelios, the fact that top esports felt like so often they were there at the objective first. If you're yeah. playing these style of compositions, you need to set your foot, uh, set your uh, base up on the river. Have the vision around. Don't let them approach from a flank angle because when EDG couldn't flank, the Weaver's Wall was extra effective. They also couldn't find access to Jackie Love. And man, what what a just a turnaround in that game. It what felt like you know EDG <laughs> grabbing control and then one moment, one big mistake and it instantly turns around. You can see just the focus as well. Viper not really able to get him, despite being a three-item Jinx, just couldn't plant his feet, just could not get the damage down when he needed it most, and, and Jackie Love kind of eclipsing him in terms of damage. Scout tried his best. I did like the combination of Scout and Jigge, and even Flandre working up towards that top side to keep Wayward, but, uh, you know, kind of down, but... Again, the Gangplank just gives you so much more flexibility with where you play in the map. And just the double globals just gives you so much to work with here as top esports. Like we mentioned a million times, the Weaver's Wall, but even the Cannon Barrages, because it was like, like you mentioned, oh, if you jump over the Weaver's Wall, you're going to be stunned. But if you stay on the other side, close to the Weaver's Wall, you're just going to take about half your health bar in the Cannon Barrage. So you have to just either walk away or fully commit. And without having that full commitment on either side, you're just never going to come out with a win. Yeah, I, it just felt really rough. It felt like there was just no clear angle for them to approach it. And to be fair, this was a close game. As much it as that, that final moment just gave Top Esports momentum, EDG were ahead. Flandre was really strong in the laning phase, right? We saw uh, JJ have some fantastic play. Scout as well, when he found the angles and the silence was making it work. But Top Esports find the critical moment. The team fighting was there. Up against the team fight times, VDG, they find the edge and... Both Knight and Jackie Love doing so much when it came to those team fights. Mark as well on the Braum. It felt like whenever any threat approached them in that fight that we saw uh, when they were sort of disengaged from the mid-tier one, they would just pick a target, stun lock them, shut them down, delete them from the rift. Yeah, it really did feel like they had a full grasp on how to kind of set up their team, how they wanted to kind of go for it right there. And for me, top East.